So from my experience, what I have seen is like most of the entrepreneurs have been scratching their head. Uh, that online branding is something to do with the e-commerce. No, it's not to do something with the e-commerce. It's 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 beyond e-commerce. It's for everyone who is in the ecosystem and launching their startup, a venture with a service or the product. They have to have a a brand recall. Well, uh, those who have been thinking to start online branding, they end up and they have a no-go theory because they think that hey, to do the online branding, uh, I think uh, we cannot find a affordable within budget brand managers who can do the online branding for us. So why online branding is important, why, why I'm highlighting this online branding is important, why we are doing this webinar? Because as an angel, as a mentor, as a venture capitalist, uh, having all these three hats at my hand, I have seen that even at the stage of mentoring, if you go to any mentor, today the mentor like to see what is the brand recall you have created even at that stage you are meeting him for the mentoring. That's basically pre-seed round. So you, you need to have that online branding activities going on. You might be small in terms of the uh, visibility, but there has to be a strategy around that. Similarly, when you go to the angels or the seed round, uh, the, the brand recall is important there. And henceforth, the series A, B, C, and ongoing. So as you grow in the value chain, the brand recall has to be much higher and uh, the brand reputation basically needs to be, uh, it basically it should grow exponentially uh, with each stage. So, when you think about a venture growing online in the online space. The first thing which I think uh, you have been uh, doing really hard work is towards identifying a solution to a problem, a pain area. And while doing so, if you can build a strategy to do the online brand positioning, uh, that's the first good step. But generally what happens for the entrepreneurs, uh, they start putting on the whiteboard or brand building or brand is going to be equivalent to advertising, identify attributes, value, and then that's conventional way. And if you are pre-series A, I think uh, you should just simply ignore this approach. How to do it, in what manner you should do it with the limited resources. I think uh, Rajiv is going to cover it uh, in depth and we'll do a deep diving into it. But I feel uh, that before I hand over to Rajiv, uh, my two cents on what you can do in terms of online branding is basically a one simple approach is as explained in this slide, if you if if you look at this slide, uh, it, it it's, looks simple, and uh, similarly the the online branding activity is going to be simpler than this. So if you have a solution or a service, uh, try to build up great content around that digital content. Uh, make a great website uh, with a amazing UX around it. Design it in such a way the content plugged it with the uh, your collaterals. Try to push it in the market. And then do the search engine optimization of your content. And not to forget, it's basically 
to do the uh, consistently uh, online reputation management of your content you're pushing. pushing. So it's quite a broader level. Definitely Rajiv will give us the in-depth of how to do it and uh, what are the challenges. I'd like to take it on further. Uh, so research your audience before you start doing your online branding and uh, give your brand a voice and uh, plan your social media integration quite well. You should know what exactly the social media you're going to tap. It's not just Facebook, Twitter and uh, the Google. The, so you have to go with the local level. Uh, if you are a regional in terms of your service, you have to look at the regional part of it. And uh, be consistent when you're trying to build a content. Keep bringing the content in a consistent manner and then set frequency and optimize your website at the same time and quite be quite active in the social media as an individual, as an entrepreneur also. It's not that you simply uh, hire a consultant or a part-timer who's doing it for you, but you should basically uh, get hooked with the social media. Use Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and the likes. Uh, where you are visible, you are sharing your thoughts. Uh, be up to the mark in terms of uh, what's trend in the market. Well, who are your competitors? What's in in terms of the content? What is the subject being discussed around your vertical? You are focusing at. It. And if possible, if you can, if you don't have interest, but build the interest to run your own personal blog around it. So, what online reputation has to do is basically they have to just build uh, with under the brand online brand strategy. You have to have uh, close observation on the social media, what's going on in the social media, and uh, who are the people associating with it. Try to see how the your customers are getting associ associated through the social media while you are doing the online brand campaign because your customer is going to be your brand ambassador. So if you have thousand customers and customers does not mean that they are paying you. Uh, in a digital world, the definition of customer has gone, gone beyond the paid customers. So they are the best brand ambassadors and if you are able to engage them under your online brand strategy, I think uh, that will be amazing because your brand reputation grows very fast, exponentially I'd rather say, and uh, it helps uh, you to build organically the consumer generated media uh, content for you. Definitely uh, mainstream media is also important and uh, keep searching uh, what's going on uh, around your brand, around your team, around your product, around your uh, competitors. So that, that's basically in a nutshell is like uh, online reputation management, you have to get it done. There are tools in the market and there are experts who are doing it. Even you can do it uh, individually if you try to build your online brand and you want to do the uh, online reputation management part of it. So uh, with this, I think, uh, I like to uh, say few things before I pass it on to uh, Rajiv uh, through Anurag. If you are an entrepreneur, you want to grow your venture, uh, multifold, in this time, don't ignore the power of online branding. Uh, I'll, I'll say that uh, Namo is a perfect example to look at how Powerful is online branding. Namo is the brand globally now. And uh, for the growth, when you talk to customers, to mentors, to investors, to partners, they definitely first review your online brand recall at each stage. I'll give you an example. Uh, if let's say if uh, you come up with an idea and you want to venture out something, 
in your life by starting some great idea as a startup you are you are alone or maybe with, with a co-founder if you don't have your brand the online brand visibility as an individual people start searching about you okay hey uh, you are mr x uh, we'll come back to you so they try to find out are you visible uh, in the online space or not so the first thing is you should have your uh, linkedin profile and, and and the likes uh, there are uh, various flavors of linkedin in the world and linkedin quite powerful so the journey of on, online branding starts from the day you do the ideation of your venture and with each stage you have to evolve the online brand building strategies there has to be a constant innovation around those strategies and uh, i think with this i like to uh, thank you all and uh, i can join later on for the q and a uh, and I'm passing on to Anurag. Thank you very much. Over to Anurag. Thanks, Vikram. Um, thanks for the valuable insights. And um, I'd like to take this uh, opportunity for about two minutes to introduce uh, about GHV Accelerator. So as as GHV, we um, um, we call ourselves an accelerator with a difference, and definitely the reason uh, behind that is because we are for the sole purpose of helping startups in raising Series A. Uh, and uh, for that, the primary, um, there are three ways how we do it. Uh, the first one is that we help startups by, um, you know, giving them um, all the mentorship required through our very esteemed men mentor network from India and Japan. And we also help them by uh, giving them a controlled environment helping them to be able to focus on their core activities and hence uh, also enhance the business matrix which are required by the series a investors and they ask for that uh, the third thing and which is which as we see as only an implementation support and a bridge funding is a, a series um, a hundred thousand dollars uh, sustainability funding for a period of up to one year and this is how um, the accelerator is able to help these startups in, you know, building uh, the right matrix and getting ready for Series A. So as a result, what the startups are able to achieve is a healthier business matrix, a decent amount of growth to be able to have a higher valuation, um, getting a right or rather much more funding, uh, much more level of funding than they had initially planned and in a much shorter time uh, frame. So you know, some of these um, very specific um, you know, uh, ingredients of uh, raising the Series A are mentioned on the screen also as well right now. Uh, it's, we look at a wow team, a scalable business model, um, outstanding execution capabilities with a prototype uh, and a repeat customer order. Uh, that's, that's the... Um, uh, formula along with a you know key differentiator as technology that is what we look at and we are able to help these startups in uh, raising a series a in a shorter time frame by this formula um, what i would now do is i'll be um, passing on the uh, control to uh, rajiv and he would be speaking on the key aspects of online branding i'm also transferring the control for the screen right away Okay, hi everyone. This is uh, this is Rajiv here. Um, I'm just going to make sure, um, Anurag, you're able to project the presentation. Um, just working on that. So while the while the presentation, okay, no worries. So while the presentation comes up, um, you know, thank you to uh, Vikram and to GH3 for giving uh, me the opportunity to speak to you today uh, about online branding. Uh, you know, it's a fairly exciting topic. Um, 
and something that uh, you know we think about a lot. Uh, but before we sort of get started, you know, I actually want to thank all of you, all the entrepreneurs who are on this call. Uh, you know, for finally, I would say, for being uh, for taking the brave step um, of founding your company or about to, you know, if you're about to start your company, then best of luck. Um, because you know, I think for most people today, uh, starting their own company, becoming their own boss, creating something which is truly innovative, um, is a big dream. You know, I want to applaud all of you um, for chasing your dream and for making it happen, right? But as romantic as it sounds, um, you know, to have your own startup and company, we all know it's not romantic, right? It's it's a lot of hard work. You've got to navigate your way through a lot of things, um, and uh, you know, you you you've got to make it happen. It does not happen on its own. It's kind of like marriage, right? You think it's romantic, but you need a lot of work there. Um, which is the reason why nine out of ten startups fail, right? And then there's a reason behind that. Now, Silicon Valley. Um, actually where sort of most of the startups have been uh, till this time, uh, they actually did a research uh, on all the startups that have failed uh, and looked at the reasons, um, you know, as to why these startups fail at such a, such a high rate and some fallout of people who started their company at some point, they will kind of give up and, and the company folds up. So what's the reason? Now, of course, there were some uh, obvious ones there, uh, you know, like the entrepreneur gave up. Uh, or uh, the startup ran out of cash, um, you know, or the team had a fallout, the team was not the right team, which is, of course, we know is very important. But the other ones that came um, as reasons why, uh, you know, uh, the, the startup fails is they entered into a vertical which was too competitive, right? Competition was very heavy and uh, the competitors did not give up. Um, or I think another important reason was, uh, you know, they failed to differentiate themselves or their marketing strategy was very weak. Uh, yet another important reason was, their, you know, the, the company was not very responsive to customers, right, uh, or was not very quick to react to what the market was telling them. Um, and all of these areas are areas where online branding can help or literally can save a startup, right? You want to know what the number one area was? Number one area or, or the number one reason why startups fail is because they were building a product that the market did not need, right? So too often we see, um, you know, um, entrepreneurs when they start a company, they're in love with an idea, they start building that idea, uh, and pretty soon uh, you're down a path where, uh, you know, you're, you're building something on the own, but, but you know, it's, it's not something uh, that the market is reacting favorably to, right? Now, whether it is the packaging, whether it is your offer, whether it is the product, uh, the important thing is the entrepreneur falls out of line in, you know, in terms of what the market expects um, and what the needs they are solving, right? Um, so, I think through the course of this presentation, uh, we kind of look at uh, the reasons why, uh, you know, how can online branding uh, play a part here? Um, now, the question really is, um, and um, Anurag, you can actually show the first slide. Uh, the question is that if it's if it's really that important, uh, right? If online branding can play such an important part, then why do uh, why do people still shy away from it, right? Why don't startups invest in it? Um, why are SMBs and entrepreneurs not looking at uh, online branding? Uh, you know, it's such a strategic tool. Vikram mentioned that when you go in for funding, uh, one of the first things that um, you know, angels or investors look into uh, is what kind of brand do you have, what kind of recall do you have. So really, if that's the case, um, you know, what's what's keeping people away from it, uh, from investing into online branding, right? So number, there are a couple of reasons, uh, you know, like I'm listing on the slide. Um, the, the number one is the not for me syndrome, right? Most people when they're starting out, they think it's not for me. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's something that is for big brands. It's something that, uh, you know, when, when you're big, uh, when you're successful, when you've done series A, B, and C, um, that's the time you, you probably need to start investing in your brand. Uh, it's expensive um, and, and, you know, uh, it's, it's not something to focus on at this stage, right? Most entrepreneurs, of course, uh, they, they focus on the product they're building, the offer they're building, uh, they focus on leads, they focus on sales and marketing, Yet, uh, you know, uh, the, the brand, right, and how vibrant it is, is, is really the, 
the very thing which makes your company, which makes your startup uh, very attractive to investors, makes it very attractive to customers uh, and employees, uh, and it's, it's the one thing uh, that can make you stand out, right? Um, it's also not something that can be achieved overnight. Um, you know, branding by, by definition is, is something that is achieved over a period of time. And therefore, the sooner you start, uh, sort of the more advantage you have uh, to build a, a really, really uh, successful online brand. The second reason why um, people do not invest in it is, of course, you're a startup. You, you're a young company with limited resources uh, trying to do a lot of things uh, at the same time, right? So anything that is not an immediate ROI, anything that does not give me instant gratification, anything that does not expand the business, the top line, the bottom line um, in a meaningful fashion um, is, is kind of deprioritized, right? Um, so most people would actually focus on building the product, on building the team, uh, on investing in sales, on investing in leads. Um, however, uh, you know, as, as hopefully I'll be able to convince you through the presentation, um, this is one aspect uh, that actually can have a little bit of ROI and is also strategic enough that you should not um, sort of, uh, you know, uh, defocus on it. Just the same way as you wouldn't defocus on building the team. We all know that, uh, you know, people is the other strong aspect that, that uh, differentiates um, a startup. I think um, the other big reason why, uh, you know, uh, startups stay away from online branding or do not invest that kind of time um, is something that Vikram mentioned, right, is typically most people will confuse uh, branding with advertising, right, or branding with marketing. And most people think, um, you know, oh, if I have to build a brand, I have to go and invest a, a lot of dollars or a lot of money uh, into marketing, I have to, you know, put pour heavily into, um, into Google, into doing search engine marketing, doing TV or road shows, um, I, I need to sponsor mega conferences in order to get my name out there. Um, you know, and, and again, nothing could be further away from truth because, you know, when you, when you think about online branding, uh, the beautiful aspect is not only is it cost effective, uh, but it's also very, very measurable, um, right? Uh, advertising is, again, very different from branding because advertising is, hey, if you want ABC product, get it at X percent off, right? That's an offer, that's push. Uh, branding is actually the reverse of it. Branding creates pull, right? So uh, branding is about telling the customer uh, what need they have, right? Why they need to solve that uh, need by in buying a solution or a product or a service, uh, right? And the brand always almost says, hey, I am the best brand or the best company that can service that need for you. Uh, and the reason is because we understand very intimately what that need is all about, right? So the branding experience is all about creating a pull in the market uh, so that customers look for you, they search for you, um, and, and they are able to uh, identify their needs with whatever solutions you're building, uh, and then go ahead and, and complete the experience, whereas advertising is actually push, right? So that's a, that's a critical difference that um, I think people need to uh, have in their mind uh, and, and uh, you know, not confuse the two terms. And of course, uh, you know, the, the last thing is uh, lack of expertise. Most people, uh, you know, when, when entrepreneurs are really born, they are not born to build brands, uh, just the same way as they are not born to build teams. They are, they are born to solve a problem, to create uh, innovation, to create disruption, or, or to build a product or an offering that they feel passionate about. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think most people also shy away because they feel they don't have the necessary tools, the skills, uh, or the resources um, to kind of build this brand. So again, a combination of these factors, right? Um, thinking that it's, it's for the big guys or it comes later in the day, thinking that, hey, this is something that is not gonna give me immediate ROI. Even if I build the brand one week, one month, one year later, it's gonna be fine. Let me get 10 more customers and it should be okay. Um, confusing between branding and advertising or, or thinking that you don't have the skills are sort of, at least in our experience uh, here at GoDaddy, are some of the sort of main reasons why uh, SMBs and startups stay away from branding. Now, sort of in the next uh, 20 minutes or so, right, um, this, this presentation is not about how you can absolutely do it, um, you know, what are the six steps to get online branding right, uh, for two reasons. One, the subject is extremely vast, right, 
Um, it's not something that can be achieved over a presentation. If it were that simple, you would see more people doing it. Um, and then second, building a brand or building a vibrant brand uh, online, right, is different for different companies, right? There is no silver bullet. There is no secret sauce, as Vipran was referring to, uh, that uh, you know, or a one size fit all that can actually apply across the board. Um, it requires a deep understanding of the entrepreneur's business. Uh, it requires a deep understanding of the customers he's trying to target. And, and between those two is really, uh, you know, the, the techniques uh, kind of emerge on, on how you can build a vibrant brand for a company. But having said that, I think there are um, some principles or some aspects that I thought I should focus on, and I'm going to talk about four of them, right, which, uh, which I want to share with you. And these are things that, uh, you know, uh, which, which you should think about as you go about building your brand or as you go about thinking about your company. Um, and of course, we at uh, at GHV uh, Accelerator, of course, can can uh, I think that's the role of the accelerator. We can help you absolutely in, in terms of taking that forward. So let's go to the next slide and let's look at what are, what are, what sort of uh, the first aspect here. Uh, the first thing is discoverability, right? Um, I think when a startup starts. Uh, right, the, the first job of the entrepreneur is, of course, to build a product, build an offering. But if all those things are in place, right, the number one job of any entrepreneur is to make sure that their target audience knows about the company. Period. Right. So if you're targeting thousand customers or a million customers, uh, your job is to make sure those million guys or those customer segment know about, uh, you know, what your uh, what your company is about and what kind of product and service it's it's uh, it's offering. I think earlier on, uh, you know, and, and the reason why this has become so important is because earlier on it, you used to have this philosophy that, okay, if I build it, they'll come, right? Now, which was true when you had only a handful of startups, right? In India, it's alone right now. It's, it's being referred to as the golden age of entrepreneurship. Uh, there are about 3,500 odd startups um, and the numbers expected to balloon to about 10,000 in a few years. So, uh, you know how people find you I think is and how discoverable your company is 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 going to be very important and the reason this has become um, uh, you know increasingly important in the in the last couple of years uh, is because of changing customer behavior right today if you want to buy anything uh, you look at consumers across verticals across industries um, and you find that they will first search online uh, right they'll figure out the product and then they may purchase it offline or online that can depend on consumer to consumer uh, but the the searching experience is almost always online, right? So it's extremely critical for you to be discoverable uh, by this customer so that he can start interacting with your company. Now, again, most people think that's true in the consumer space, um, you know. But but even if you're a B two B brand, uh, right, where you're selling to other businesses uh, and you have to create proposals, you have to uh, send documents for internal approvals. Uh, you want to understand solutions, customers will be searching online around your category, around your need uh, to establish what kind of solution they would need. Um, you could even be a traditional company, right? Let's say you, you're a cycle parts manufacturer, right? Um, even then, uh, being discoverable helps you reach customers that are probably not in the same geographical area or are not dependent on where your presence, your physical presence is, right? So I think. Um, being discoverable is, like I said, it's it's the number one job for a uh, for a company uh, in today's day and age, uh, where uh, you know the, the the mobile is obviously a very very powerful device that anybody can immediately get on the net and figure out what's uh, what what kind of solution he needs. Now, how do you how do you make yourself uh, discoverable? Well, one of the first things, of course, uh, that you that you've got to do. And sorry, um, uh, Anurag, we are still on um, discoverability. The first slide. Um, is to get the right online identity, right? Um, it starts with a domain name, um, and again, there there are uh, do, choosing a domain name for your company is again a topic that that can probably take the entire 20 minutes. But uh, what sort of a name are you choosing? Of course, it's got to be short, it's got to be memorable, it's got to be something which which is easy to type, easy to understand. All of those things go. But I think if there's one thing you want to take home, uh, it's got to have the keywords. Uh, that that your company is uh, targeting, right? Because it makes it that much more easier. Um, and uh, what that does for you is, it of course drives a lot of traffic to your uh, towards your website as well. So um, 
not only are you able to take a, a larger share of voice in the in the online space, but uh, you know your your uh, your domain name says a lot about what kind of business and what kind of company you are doing, right? Uh, the second thing is um, once you once you've got a name, you've also got to make sure that you protect your brand uh, online. Now that's this is becoming hugely important um, because. Um, in the earlier days, people simply used to take their .com. So I, I run a, uh, a watch company. I'm going to say rajivwatches.com, and that's enough, right? Um, but as I think most of you would know, the domain name industry itself is going through a, a, a lot of changes, and there are new extensions that are coming up. Um, there are also misspellings, uh, right? Uh, there are uh, other variants of your name that you should also go and book uh, so that you're able to protect your brand. A good example is Facebook, right? You typically type facebook.com. Uh, but try and misspell Facebook even right now. Try fcaebook.com and you'll see it immediately redirects to uh, facebook.com. That's a, that's a good example of um, uh, protecting your brand online. Or try uh, facebook.biz. No matter what extension you type, uh, eventually you will land up into facebook.com. Now that's good brand protection um, done by uh, Facebook. So then no matter you, what kind of, um, uh, you know, even if you're misspelling your name, even if you're going uh, to other, uh, uh, you know, uh, other extensions, you're still landing on the website uh, that the company intends to, uh, for you to land on, right? Um, and, and that makes sure that, that you're protecting the traffic online, uh, online and you're, you're not giving room for your competitors or for other uh, people to actually abuse your brand or erode brand, uh, uh, you know, value. Um, the other thing is uh, the trademark clearing house, uh, right? So once you have your brand, you should kind of register it with the TMCH, uh, which you can again uh, figure out online. And and what that does is not only does it protect does it protect your trademark, um, but it it also makes sure that if anybody else is trying to book a domain name around the trademark, you will get alerted, right? So you've got to be careful about um, because if all all your online activities are dependent on this core asset, uh, which is your domain name. Um, you've got to make sure that you're able to build the right uh, fences around it so that you're able to uh, get your identity and, and also secure your identity. Uh, the second thing is, of course, once you've got your, once you make your website, but like I've written on the slide, don't just make a website. Um, most people we've seen, uh, when you ask, hey, do you have an online presence, they'll say, yep, I have a website. And what you will see is probably the most stale piece of content that you've ever seen in your life, right? Um, just having a website is not enough. Uh, like I said, we are talking about discoverability. The difference between an ordinary website and a brand that is that is viral, that is successful, that, that has buzz going around it or that has recall, like Vikram was pointing out, uh, is if the website is, is discoverable, right? So you want to make sure your website is connected to social media, uh, your website has access from multiple devices. It's responsive in nature. Um, you know, it's the design is slick. Uh, it aids conversion. It builds authority. Um, and, and you know, uh, you were listing the website on uh, you know the communities that matter to you, uh, the yellow pages and, and directories that are out there. In short, you should kind of remove every barrier um, that is there for uh, you know for 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 the customer to be able to discover your uh, site. Now, most of us feel that um, you know that that there are obviously everyone has a website, but you know in India, I mean, just to share some statistic with you, right? In a, in, in a land of uh, 30 million SMBs, right, that India has, uh, small and medium businesses, um, there are less than half a million websites in the country, right? So it, it's it's a misnomer that every business has a website, and really, if you do not have this this asset, um, I wonder how you can build a, a credible online brand, right? So I think I think the number one thing that every startup, every entrepreneur should think about uh, is how do I secure the right names? How do I make sure that I uh, that I fence my competition from entering into my space online? How do I control traffic and how do I get a web presence or a website uh, that can take advantage of that traffic, uh, convert it, and uh, you know obviously then later on you can monetize it. So I think discovery is uh, is huge. Again, there are a number of different ways of how you can achieve this. Uh, you can come uh, directly to uh, sites that provide these kind of solutions. You can actually go to uh, you know agencies and resellers and partners uh, in your areas who can actually advise you. Um, or you know um, accelerators like GHV are are a good starting point. 
uh, for you to engage uh, and, and get more information about it. You can also learn about this on your own, right? So things like um, Google Keyword Planner actually are, are really great tools which can help you understand what's happening in your space, in your market. Um, and, and find out what kind of names you should be using, what kind of sites you should be building, uh, so on and so forth. Right, so that's about um, discoverability. This is why you need to have, uh, you know, if, if you're thinking about online brand, you've got to make sure it's really, really easy to discover the brand. Um, the second thing, and let's move on to the next slide, and the second thing is, you know, differentiation. Now that matters, right? It, it matters um, you know, uh, it, you know if, if, you, if you want to set up a good brand, uh, it's even more important if you're a startup, and it's doubly more important if you are a startup in India. Okay, now why is that? Well, you know, I, I point you to the uh, to the Silicon Valley research I was talking about, right? And one of the biggest reasons uh, why startups fail is because they were not able to differentiate themselves from competition, right? Our competition was too heavy, and they simply gave up. Um, of course, you cannot differentiate yourself if you don't have a vibrant brand, right? Um, and, and you know that's that's really one reason why this is this this thing is uh, you you need to think about your differentiation strategy. Uh, the second thing is uh, if you're a startup, right? It's reasonable to expect that you will not have a strong brand because you're just starting up, right? You're not an established enterprise that's used by a lot of customers or millions of uh, people, um, and therefore how you know associating yourself with other brands who are complementary in nature can actually lend a lot of credibility to you and can help you establish your brand a lot right um, like i said it's even more important if you're in india because in india uh, which is which is obvi obviously a very very diverse market it's an emerging market right needs are still surfacing the first mover advantage is very critical and and you can practically look across industries across segments uh, that companies who've had the first mover advantage have remained leaders and have thrived uh, a lot, right? Uh, in, in most industries, you will see the top three or four players control practically 80, 90 percent of the demand, right? So it's important for, as, as I mean, by definition, you're a startup, you're trying to do something disruptive, you're trying to do something which is innovative, which has not been done before. Um, and therefore, if you're entering into a niche, uh, right? Uh, you, you establish your brand quickly, differentiate yourself because that can give you a huge lead, right? Now most startups, when you when you say, hey, what kind of brand would you want to develop? Uh, they make loose statements, uh, you know, and these loose statements are like, hey, my I want my brand to be known for good quality, uh, or I want my brand to be known for quality customer care, or I want my brand to be known for, um, you know, being the price leader in, in my segment, right? Well, well, the truth is. Um, you know, customers don't think like that, right? Uh, customers typically first think of the category and then think of the brand, right? So, um, you know, for example, I want to have fun, um, so uh, I want to have a beer, right? That's the category I've thought about, and once I've made that decision, that's when I say, okay, what kind of beer I would want, right? I would want a Foster's or a Kingfisher or a Corona or whatever, right? That Those are the brands that are coming up. So I think as a, as a startup, it's, it's uh, actually very, very important um, for you to define your target audience, right, uh, and, and look at the category you want to dominate because that's the first milestone um, you've got to achieve as a company, right, uh, that, hey, we've defined, here is our core audience. Uh, we, we don't have to be, uh, you know, very generalist or very mainstream and trying to appeal to every kind of customer, right, and you'll end up achieving nothing. Uh, it's far more better to define very sharply what's the niche I'm trying to target, uh, right? What is the definition of this niche? What is the profile of that customer? And then trying to dominate that category. And that's where good content comes in because content actually helps you build credibility, right? Um, so uh, if, if you look at, uh, you know, how do you differentiate, differentiate yourself, I think sort of the first uh, tactic you gotta, you got to look at is how well have you defined your audience uh, right and therefore by nature the category that you want to dominate um, and then you know what sort of content are you uh, are you are you creating such that people uh, you know such that you appear credible uh, and people think that you are the authority uh, in that space and and will turn towards you uh, right um, so I, I again you know examples are galore really you can look at um, any number of verticals and you'll you'll typically find there are a lot of providers uh, but 
you know, it's it's the person who has uh, who controls the content, who controls the conversation in that category, it ends up being a leader, right? A, a good example of that is uh, Evernote. Right, uh, there are not a dearth of uh, note-taking software in the world, but but you look at Evernote, they have got a fantastic blog. They talk about note-taking, they talk about the various aspects of it. Um, so if when I'm searching for a solution, saying, "Hey, I need a note-taking software which which does X, Y, and Z," I'm more likely to land into their site and therefore end up using Evernote, uh, you know, than uh, than any other solution. So again. Defining your audience, owning that category, and building a content strategy around it uh, does not need a lot of money, right? It needs insight. It needs understanding of the customer you're targeting, um, and and making sure that you own the conversation uh, is important. And like uh, again, I think Vikram referred to this, consistency in execution is again very critical because uh, you know the stale content is something that no one likes. Um, and so uh, I think the lesson that uh, every startup should take from here. Is this has got to be a focused effort? So you you're better off, uh, you know, dedicating bandwidth to it, uh, whether you have it in house or you partner with an agency or you do freelancing on it. Are, are different ways of doing it, um, but you almost always want to make sure that you dominate that category by executing on that consistently, making sure you have fresh content, and and you're engaging uh, customers in that category there. Let's move on to the uh, next slide. And sort of the third um, important aspect to think about is communities. Now, again, I, we don't have to talk about uh, why social media is important, what are the big social media providers. I think we all know that. Uh, we all know that social media presence is important. Um, but I think in India, it becomes doubly important because uh, you know it, it, social media is very, very popular here. Uh, it's the largest driver of uh, internet adoption. Um, and and what is increasingly happening is that customers, before making a purchase decision, right, uh, they are not looking at advertising, they are not looking at sales offers, they are not looking at brochures and sales materials, but increasingly are turning towards friends, families, trusted advisors, communities, reviews uh, to form an opinion. Um, and therefore, if you want to build your online brand, um, it's it's really really critical uh, for you to have. Uh, not only have your website and uh, you know the discoverability sorted out like we were talking earlier, uh, but also that you're very very active on uh, you know on on uh, all the social media communities that that you're aware of. Um, and I think the one thing that matters uh, right there is advocacy. Correct. Uh, what do I mean by advocacy? Now, like I said, when you when you're a startup, uh, you know you have a brand that's obviously not um, yet established. It's not known uh, far and wide. Um, but as you as you work with your customers, as you provide them solutions, and as you create what we call as customer delight, right? Uh, that delight uh, needs to be captured. Uh, it needs to be. You've got to ask. You've got to have a mechanism where customers can uh, praise you for job well done, uh, where customers can write reviews, and then you, in in turn, the entrepreneur or the company should be able to take that and expose that. Uh, on all the communities, all the social media, all the directories that you're engaging in, so that other people can see. And what that does is, when customers are talking positively about you, uh, it actually builds uh, credibility. And again, you know, goes a long way in owning that category I was talking about. Um, you know, so for example, a good example is uh, what we do at GoDaddy. At, at, at GoDaddy, we have a care center where customers call, and every time we kind of resolve a problem. Uh, and if the customer is happy with it, we ask him to write a review, and then we kind of take that review and, and share that with other customers, uh, which helps our brand because it's it's not only uh, seen as a brand that uh, you know other customers are praising, but like I said, it also makes you uh, responsive to customer needs. Uh, remember the number one reason I was talking about? The number one reason why startups fail is because they're building a product which nobody wants. Um, and this process that I'm talking about of engaging in communities, making sure you're hearing to customers and are responsive to their needs, uh, allows you to understand what the market is telling you, uh, change your strategy, and make sure you're building something that the market wants. Right. So advocacy is huge, and, and I would encourage every startup uh, to have a process. Again, it does, there are there are tools and techniques uh, that that can help you achieve the, uh, achieve this. Does not need a lot of money. Does not need a lot of investment. Uh, from your side, um, and again, there's a lot of freeware there as well uh, that 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 can make this happen. The second aspect in community is obviously employee evangelism. Look, uh, all of us are startups, right? We are strapped of resources by definition, 
um, we don't have the luxury to go hire external evangelists or external consultants. So you need every bit of evangelism to talk about your online brand. Um, and you know, one resource that's normally overlooked is employees, right? And and uh, I, I think you need every employee to be an evangelist of your brand. Now, now I think the question is, as an entrepreneur and as a startup or as the company management, what are you guys doing to enable your employees to become these evangelists? What information, what tools, what positioning statements do they have, right? Um, you should also help these employees create their own personal brand, in which case they actually add even more value. Uh, uh, to the company uh, and uh, it helps in actually uh, attracting talent and retaining talent. Like, like I was saying earlier, a, brand, a vibrant brand is something that makes your company not only stand apart but it makes it very attractive to investors, to communities and to employees. So, so please do spare a thought on that. And then the final slide, uh, right, which is I think what what was uh, a big concern, uh, you know, with with uh, with startups and entrepreneurs earlier on, was uh, it's not measurable. Well, the good news is in the online space, everything is measurable, right? You don't have to go to conferences, you don't have to go to booths, you don't have to speak at sessions or do publicity stunts. Uh, that that you and then hope in hell that this would create my brand. No, the the good part about online is. You've got enough tools, enough processes, enough uh, platforms that make every bit uh, measurable. So every transaction, every interaction, every comment, every share, every like can be tracked um, as it should be and gives you a, a, almost a real-time feedback um, into what's working in your market, what message is resonating and what message is not resonating. Now this is not only for startups. Uh, you know, even established companies do this, and you know, we we follow this uh, as well. Uh, you know, we are all the time testing in the market. So tools like, for example, Google Analytics, right? They can give you a very fantastic idea as to what kind of traffic is coming to your site, where is it coming from, who's sending that traffic, uh, is it converting well enough or not, and and where are people dropping off, right? Um, we do A/B testing all the time, where you can actually put a piece of content on your website. Um, and and you know kind of test whether you know people are liking it or not depending on what kind of conversion it's it's happening. Um, so again, it, the good part about online is that it's it's really really measurable uh, at every aspect, and you should use that to kind of inform your strategy. Uh, the two aspects I think you should you need to think about is one definitely think about your off strategy, right? Um, the good part is. Uh, like I said, you can you can make an offer out there uh, and wait to offer again and see which one is performing better and continuously test. Right, there is no such thing as a hero offer that stays true for all or, you know for a year or or whatever. Um, you know you, you can test that offer and make sure you can build those codes uh, into every piece of marketing material that you have so that you you get real time feedback about. Uh, you know what are customers liking, what positioning is r running in the market, and what is not. That will help you build, uh, you know, the right ROI for for the time and money investment you're making. Uh, the second part, I think, it actually is even more interesting, which is beyond the ROI. You need to think about what kind of engagement uh, and sentiment you have with your audience. Uh, so, for example, we talked about communities and social media earlier. Uh, you know, we, uh, you know, again, you you need to track. Uh, you know, how are you creating uh, engagement with the target audience that you've defined, right? So, how many likes, how many shares and views you are getting? Uh, uh, you know, uh, a brand into a really, really vibrant and engaging brand. And, and you know, coupled with what the advocacy part that I was talking about, uh, the sentiment actually can help you track whether your customers are becoming your motors. Are they going to promote your company? Are they going to promote your product? Are they going to promote your experience? Uh, and th that gets the word of mouth going, right? And, and it's something that we all think is a fuzzy concept. Uh, but we all know it's very powerful. When a company has word of mouth, you don't need a lot of marketing. You don't need a lot of uh, push in the market because customers are automatically drawn to your brand. Um, so again, these are these are sort of things to uh, sort of think about. Um, I know we are out of time, but I would just want to end here by saying I hope this uh, this short talk um, helped you understand why it's important to create an online brand and what are sort of sort of the four aspects to think about. Uh, you know, uh, about when you, when you're thinking about your brand. Um, and I I do want to end by saying you know when you start on this early. Uh, this can be a big differentiator between whether your startup is going to be a successful one or, or you know, it's going to end up in the trash can. 
depending on how discoverable it is, how much are you differentiating in the marketplace, how do you engage with communities, and how much are you measuring the feedback you're getting. That will make sure you're right on track with your customers. Um, so that's it from my side. I think uh, Vikram and Rag, if we have time for questions, we can uh, we can definitely take some questions. Sure, Rajiv. Thanks uh, for the valuable uh, insights. And in fact, we just have a couple of questions. Uh, so um, let's um, you know try to uh, address these quickly since we are uh, running out of time. The first one is uh, from Vikas, wherein he is uh, you know wanting to understand the comparison between uh, SEO and SMO, uh, search engine optimization and social media marketing. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, again, I, I think Vikram showed the perfect slide for this in the beginning when, you know, there was a lot of jargon thrown there, <laughs> right? Um, uh, you know, with, uh, it's uh, whether it's SEO, SEM, SMO, or whatever. Uh, but you want to understand the difference between that. It's fairly simple. SEO is about search engine optimization, right? It's when somebody searches on, on Google or any search engine, uh, Google throws a set of links, right, which are the results of, uh, you know, uh, your that, that query that was searched. Um, and SEO um, is really about how optimized your website is. Where is your website coming in those list of pages, right? Um, experience suggests that if you're not in the first sort of first 10 links, you're pretty much out because nobody goes beyond that and searches. So search engine optimization is a set of techniques you use uh, which uh, make sure that the keywords you are targeting, right, uh, you're coming at least on the first page there. And, and how you optimize your content, how is uh, the content kind of structured on your website and what keywords and what tagging uh, are you using uh, I think are various ways of making sure that your your website is search engine optimized. That's what it means, uh, right? Um, so um, to have a right SEO, uh, you can say um, strategy. You got to I mean go back to that point or that I was making around making sure you understand the target audience. Uh, how are you doing your content? How are you tagging your content? Uh, and using tools like uh, the keyword planner tool that I mentioned on Google, right, to to see what is the market searching and what kind of results are coming. So that's about that's about search engine optimization. SMO, social media, is all about how are you, how is your brand appearing on these social media communities. Let's take the example of Facebook, um, and and you know when you're placing an offer <laughs> out there, uh, what kind of people are seeing it? Um, wh are they reacting to it? Are they sharing it? Are they are they commenting on it or not? How many people have seen it? What kind of targeting are you using? Are you showing it to the whole uh, world, which uh, practically only Mark Zuckerberg can do, <laughs> or uh, you know, or you are taking attributes of your customers um, and and sort of you know targeting them uh, with the right message? So again, uh, making sure that you are optimized for that is really the sort of the category of SMO. Um, but again, regardless of the category, I think you should you should worry about what kind of customer you're targeting, and what's the content there, and what's the offer there, and setting it up in a way that you can measure the results back. I think those are sort of it applies across both. Great, Rajiv. Thanks again for the valuable insights. Um, one more question, and uh, probably this can be the last one. This uh, is being asked to Vikram. Um, how is online branding important for startups in raising Series A, and how can GHB come in and help? Vikram, over to you. Uh, thank you, Anurag. Uh, so the, just to uh, reconfirm, the question is about uh, how important is the online branding for Series A and uh, how GHV can ex uh, can help in accelerating this or can help as an accelerator. So well, uh, online branding for Series A is uh, or any investment. I'll sh I'll, uh, I should rather say online brand recall uh, is important at all these stages as I mentioned earlier. Uh, even you're going to a mentor uh, once you are ready with the idea of prototype. Uh, online branding is important because the uh, mentor has nothing to uh, validate with uh, because it's only the the team with him. So the online brand of the team is important there. Uh, when you go to the uh, angel uh, after the mentoring, uh, then uh, the angels look for uh, definitely you, uh, you may or may not be ready with the POC uh, in place. So they like to have 
how the product is coming up, uh, how good you were in SEO and SMO. I think by now you must be aware uh, after I use explanation the difference between the two. So how much you're visible, the, what's your brand recall there and uh, how it's growing. Uh, it need not to be a hockey stick but it should be on the path of a hockey stick. Uh, it should show a kind of uh, a trend where uh, the angels can basically sense and uh, preempt the future vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the potential in the market. So the online branding is important for the angels also. And when you go uh, after the angels to the Series A round, uh, there the online branding is quite critical because uh, the competition gets really tough where you are competing with only a bunch of VCs in the market and uh, thousands of uh, startups around the VCs. Now the parameter uh, basically uh, on which the VCs or the investors look for uh, the round Series A and above uh, is the reach, uh, the uh, kind of how many uh, visits are happening because of on online presence and uh, how good SEO you have done, SMO you have done. Uh, if, when you say for example that you are a venture uh, around uh, let's say uh, in the space of uh, consumer side or you are selling something uh, online uh, in terms of technology, right? So, uh, and your customer base is the uh, student side. Now, what the Series A guys will look at it is your online brand uh, presence among the student community. And if you say your market segment is India, uh, then they like to validate whether your online brand is quite uh, known to the student community uh, at to start with the the, the metros if you are not able to penetrate in the uh, town B or C. So they like to map it with the uh, brand recall of what you are trying to preach and how the, the customers are responding to, to your brand, uh, what are the reviews about your brand and uh, the numbers you have put in, in the, the business metrics which is required to uh, project your growth and all those things. So they like to map it with, with the uh, brand recall or brand, branding you have done so far. Well, as GHP Accelerator, uh, what we bring in is uh, uh, it's, it's, it's an accelerator with a difference. And uh, I'll quickly give a background why we came up with this accelerator. There are so many accelerators and being run by great uh, corporates, uh, MNCs also. Uh, so I've realized that there's a lot of gap between uh, the incubated and the Series A funded. Uh, as a number, uh, I'll say that 99% startups who have been incubated in this country are not able to raise Series A. So I quickly grabbed this uh, pain area and I tried to build a solution. I said, okay, let's build an accelerator which can help those startups who are on the path of Series A and maybe a little early to Series A, let's say six months or 10 months, uh, we are going to help them. Uh, with the test POC criteria, uh, since we are running short of time, I'm going a little fast on this. So test POC, you can check it on the website of ghpaccelerator.com. And uh, how we can help on online branding, once you are inducted in the accelerator, we are basically giving a control environment to the entrepreneur saying, hey, uh, you focus on your core competency. If it is product, then you just simply keep building product along with marketing because we are not going to do marketing for you. The control environment provides those non uh, core functions of the venture, uh, whether it's uh, the online branding, whether it's uh, uh, kind of a UX improvement, or it's the HR function, or it's the finance function. Uh, to a certain extent, it's the uh, go-to-market strategy. Uh, these things are run under the control environment, and we have modules which are given based on the need of the startup. So it's not one size fits all. So we evaluate that and if you need online branding, we customize the need of online branding guidelines for you. And uh, if you are not competent to do it, then the, we have empaneled vendors who are going to do it on your behalf at a very nominal cost. Now all these activities to raise a reason need some money. So that's, that's where we bring a kind of a for the difference that we give a check of 100,000 US dollar to each startup selected in the accelerator. We make sure that the startups who are being shortlisted should be uh, 
capable of growing 10x uh, in a short time and since we help in improving the uh, business metrics it increases the valuation and uh, since we have partnership with Japanese venture capital fund which is quite bullish about the Indian market and uh, we will be doing a demo day once the startup completes the uh, acceleration program of 6 to 12 months. Uh, the demo day will be in Japan and uh, definitely when we will go to uh, Japanese investors along with the commitments from the Indian VCs, uh, they like to have uh, the uh, report card of the brand reputation of each startup. So in a nutshell, uh, it's a complete bouquet of non-core function but very important functions required for achieving the business metrics required for Series A. Uh, that's how we are going to help through GHV Accelerator to all these startups and uh, very soon we are announcing two startups uh, in the Accelerator to start with and we are going to have 10 startups each year. Thank you very much. And uh, I believe there are a few more questions, but I think since we are out of time, I would encourage that, um, you know, uh, if you can forward the questions to our email ID uh, and we would be happy to address uh, these questions um, through the mentors. Also, uh, we have an open house uh, two hours um, interaction on Saturdays with startups. So feel free to come into our office in Gurga and we'll be happy to um, interact. Um, with all these startups as GHV on every Saturday from now on. And uh, do also join us for our next webinar with Mukul Singhal um, on 20th of February, same time, 3 to 4 p.m. And we'll be um, looking forward to interact again. Thank you.